Okay, so in the last video I talked about, I, I, I spilled the beans. I said I got bariatric surgery and whether or not you care or not, that, that was kind of a big deal for me. It was not easy necessarily to kind of come out to the world of, of what I did. It was definitely a personal journey, but I want to share this journey with other people to kind of explain a real life scenario of why and how the whole sort of system works. So for me, as I mentioned, it was a little bit of a trial and error. I had to sort of talk to a couple different doctors and get my insurance to cover it and stuff like that. So the financial aspect of it is a whole nother video probably, but I kind of want to talk a little bit about the process of actually going. The very first thing I did was actually, um, as I mentioned, I interviewed a couple different doctors. And, and the very first thing you do is you sort of have a like an intro session or a consultation. And they go through the different types of surgeries that you could have. There's like experimental surgeries. There's like the um, the gastric bypass is sort of like the gold standard that they've been doing since the 1990s. That's, that's what I did. There's also the uh, one where they sort of slice your stomach into a banana. And that is sort of really popular right now too. I can't think of the name of it, but I will drop it in the show. And then there is the adjustable band surgery, which I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not an expert, but I do, I do think that's sort of on the the sort of outs in terms of bariatric surgery. So in my opinion, gastric bypass or the, the slice version is the most popular. So there is a, uh, a lot of different theories or a lot of different myths about how this whole thing works. But at the end of the day, uh, you do have to go through many, many hurdles. When I met with my doctor, they gave me a whole sheet of things, like a whole list of things I had to do in order to get the surgery, right? First of all, I had to go through a bunch of tests, like obviously your blood work, your, you know, um, like that kind of stuff, like the, the, the sort of normal, like doctor visit type things, which you have to pass. Obviously you have to get a cardiogram and all the sort of pre-surgery stuff that you normally would do. You have to get a letter of recommendation, or at least I did from like a doctor saying that you, this is a medical, a medical necessity and that you're a good candidate for it. So. Uh, that was a little bit of a tricky thing because I wanted to use a doctor that was in a different hospital network. So of course, none of these hospital networks tend to like talk to each other. So that was tricky. It, it worked out in the long run and I'm very grateful for the doctors who took the time to do it. But uh, that was one process. You do have to get like a psychiatric evaluation. For, and, and, and again, I'm not a medical professional and I'm not a psychiatrist, but I think that there's basically two reasons why they do that. One. They want to test your sort of mental capacity to make sure that you don't have any eating disorders like like um, uh, bulimia or anorexia or anything like that already or that by getting the surgery that it could uh, exacerbate one of those sort of issues. But two, I think they want to sort of give you a little bit of a stress test to understand what you're exactly you're going into. It's not like peaches and cream. I mean, like once you go through the surgery, there is definitely things that you have to change to your lifestyle. And if you don't sort of like realize that, I think that they want to make sure you understand that you are definitely going through a lifestyle change and that some things that you did in the past may not be what you could do in the future. So uh, that was a little bit of a process. Uh, I had to go also to get a like ultrasound or a, um, a scan of my stomach to make sure that there wasn't anything, you know, I think they called it an upper GI. That was actually kind of really, um, that was not, delightful at all I'm not gonna lie like that was kind of disgusting luckily it's a pretty quick situation but you have to drink this like you know barium fluid or whatever and it, it made me want to like vomit so yeah it was it was not cool but luckily I passed with flying colors and it was it was over so that was um a process and of course the final follow-ups with the surgeon and the dietitian i had to meet with a dietitian three or four times before the surgery to kind of like explain the what how this is going to work the actual weight loss process exercise requirements and of course the diet up until the surgery which that i think has a lot of misconceptions too up first of all, I was in the top group, as I mentioned in my first video. So I was already in the process of losing weight. I had actually already lost about 15, 20 pounds before I went and met with the surgeon. So that was a really good positive thing. And if you can, I recommend going into a bariatric sur surgeon consultant or uh, bariatric surgery consultation, like showing them that you are losing weight, that you are in support groups, that you have a coach or something like that, because that will help you sort of be a good candidate for this procedure. 
The second thing I had to do was uh, start to take vitamins and stuff like that, that was going to help me lose weight. I was actually at the time before surgery, just taking like multivitamins, like general multivitamins, which was fine. The after surgery, things are, things are different, but I'm only talking about up into the surgery in this video. So the next thing is uh, preparing your meals and starting to uh, show the dietitian that you can make lifestyle changes. So for me, I was actually taking photos of my food and, and keeping a, like a video journal. Uh, to me, that was the easiest because I don't like, really like writing down like what it was or calculating the calories. I mean, I do calculate calories now, but it's a little bit different because my, my food is pretty consistent. But I was eating basically a lot of protein, a lot of tuna, and just like after the surgery, you want to make sure you eat a lot of protein, 60 to 80 grams of protein a day. And that is a lot for some people if you're not used to it. But for me, it was eating a lot of tuna, a lot of fish, a lot of chicken, like that kind of stuff. And that really helped me sort of get on the right path of eating better, eating clean, and, and making this a success for myself in the future. So that's like the that's like the sort of like from I would say like March of 2022 until August of 2022, basically. Is that is it, was that entire process? It was around May, about a year ago, right now that that process sort of congealed, and that was when I knew that like, this actually was going to happen. And I think we actually scheduled the surgery sort of like in May or June. I wanted it to happen right away, but of course, like doctors and hospitals and insurance, it's, it's a process, so it takes time. And then finally, uh, when I got the actual go ahead, we had to schedule like the two weeks up into the surgery. And two weeks up into the surgery is when you have to basically be on a uh, very restrictive diet up into one week where you're basically on a full liquid diet. Now, that was definitely the hardest because that is a no sugar, no caffeine only protein shakes diet. And that was that was difficult. Um, it, it's not something I really want to do again, but it wasn't exactly like the worst thing in the world either. The the sort of the gold standard of protein is like the premier pro, premier protein shakes. And they're, to me, I like them. I think they're pretty delicious. In fact, I still drink a protein shake every day. I drink the coffee protein shakes every morning. It's a way to kind of get me up and going and I like them. Luckily, I don't have a problem with them. I know there's people who don't like them, but ultimately, Protein shakes, water, sugar-free liquids like Crystal Light, sugar-free Jello, sugar-free uh, anything else. Liquid was basically broth was uh, something that I had to live on for basically a week, and that was that was very difficult, but not something that I wasn't able to surmount. And then the day of, the day before surgery, you have to be on a full liquid diet, meaning like only water or something like that, and broth, which was which was difficult, but you're so close at that point, it's like, whatever, you know, if you get through that, you can get through that. Okay, so as I was recording or editing this video in the studio, as I'm doing right now, I'm, I realized that I had some sort of like personal private vlogs that I recorded the week of before the surgery. So I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna go ahead and put them into this video. Uh, of course, they were, I, when I did these videos, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to share this with the world or not. So uh, they are kind of to myself, but what the hell, I've already gone this far, might as well share everything. So here we go. This is kind of like the lost footage that I just found. So check it out. What's up, everyone? It's Scott Winterath, and this is literally day one of my bariatric journey here. It is August 4th, and I am starting the liquid diet. I can only have pro protein shakes. Well, let me see. Let's talk about what I can drink. Let's see here. Stage two. Here it is right here. Stage two, full liquid diet. It says I have to drink at least 60 grams of protein a day. Drink 60 grams of protein, not eat 60 grams. Drink 60 grams of protein per day. And that's roughly, uh, I was recommended to use the Atkins uh, protein shakes because they're a little bit less calories, I believe. And, and I have to drink those up until the surgery. So basically four bottles of protein shakes per day. Plus I can drink any calorie-free, alcohol-free, calorie-free, and non-carbonated drinks up to 64 ounces. So that includes, well, of course, water, <laughs> infused water, which include cucumber, mint, cinnamon, or fruit, sugar-free flavored water, Aquafina, Dasani, Hand Fruit, fruit 2.0, I believe it is, 
Vibin Water Zero, Crystal Light, Sugar Free Kool Aid, Ryler's Drink Mix, Propel by Lipton, Ocean Spray, of course, all diet, all sugar free, Powerade Zero, V8 Splash, and Good Drink Bat. Um, unsweetened decaffeinated tea, decaffeinated coffee, which I did have a cup of decaffeinated coffee already. Uh, low sodium tomato juice, sugar free popsicles, sugar free sorbet, or I tell you nice, sugar free jello, broth, or strained soup. And that's all I can have basically between now and August 12th. And then after that, it's going to be another two weeks on uh, liquid based diet. So it's going to be a challenge. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I already want Diet Coke or I want uh, coffee with cream and sugar, but. I will survive. I have a goal. I have a, an end in mind. I'm waking up today about 3.06. So uh, a little bit heavier. I had a little bit, you know, probably too much fun over the weekend camping with the guys. But um, here I am starting my journey and let's see how it goes. Okay, day two. I'm down three pounds on one day. That's cool. <laughs> uh, caffeine withdrawal. Big deal. Been kind of really groggy really slow really not feeling myself with the caffeine withdrawal but that was mostly my fault heather heather told me i should wean myself off and well i didn't so kudos to her but i'm the one who's gonna deal with it so that um hungry i am definitely hungry i mean four protein chicks a day is not enough but um it is what it is what's up everyone it's Tuesday, August 9th. Surgeries in three days. Um, it's been a little bit of a struggle on a liquid diet. Uh, I hope there's no limit to how much sugar-free jello I can eat because I have been eating quite a bit. Uh, I'm at work. It's at lunch, though, so I thought I would just do a quick update. It's been a couple days. I've been kind of tired. I'm not really in the mood to do anything. A little lightheaded. Uh, driving in today, I felt a little more normal. Than the other day in the car, <laughs> I think almost like felt like I was drunk driving, which is not good. I actually, stopped and made Heather drive, uh, but uh, today felt fine. Um, let's see, tomorrow, tomorrow I have a meeting, which is kind of weird because I'm trying to explain to the client like I can't eat, you know, <laughs> like, and of course the place we're going to actually has protein shakes. But I'm like, no, I can't even eat those kind of protein shakes. I have to eat. Uh, either Premier or Atkins, which is actually what was suggested to me. So um, this will be interesting. It's going to be hard to go to a meal watching someone eat like that, but whatever. I got to do what I got to do. Um, Thursday is going to be kind of interesting because it's the day before, so it's like zero protein. It's only clear fluids. And um, <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to be hungry. I'm sure I'm going to be tired of water, but... Uh, the Propel has been pretty good. I've been drinking some Propel. Uh, we went to Sam's Club and they had a whole case of 12, like a 12 pack. So that's been pretty good. Uh, sugar Free Jello. I think I bought out Jewel <laughs> for Sugar Free Jello. But uh, then also Popsicles, Sugar Free Popsicles have been okay. But they're hard to find this time of year. It's August and it's like Popsicle season, right? So every time I go, they're out. But yeah, so so far so good. Down a little bit, down to like two ninety, not two ninety eight point nine, I think. So down some. Um, I haven't been really active because I haven't really been wanting to do anything. So uh, I haven't been getting my steps, which is something that I hope they don't like, you know, pester me about. But uh, basically, that's it. Uh, feeling better today. I think I'm kind of over my caffeine withdrawal, if you will, and um, you know, of course would love a Diet Coke. I think one thing that's helped me is I forgot that I can put the protein shake into decaf coffee. So that's been good. That feels a little more normal to me, having a cup of decaf coffee with a protein shake. And I've been adding a little stevia. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that or not, but um, there's stevia. there was stevia in one of the, the buy drinks that I could drink. So I figured that was okay. And it's just a little bit. So And it's only one cup. So um, hopefully that's okay. Don't tell anyone. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think I'm I'm doing okay. I, I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to kind of being on the other side of the surgery just because uh, there's a lot to, uh, there's a lot of waiting, you know, it's like one more day, one more day, one more day. And then I think after the surgery, it'd be a little bit easier because it, I won't be able to have something because it will hurt or I don't want to hurt, you know, stretch my stomach or break the, the wound or whatever. So, um so that will be interesting 
to see how that goes. I think it'll be better looking at the pureed meals options <laughs> right now, actually. And, um, you know, I like smoothies, so that will be easy to make. But, you know, I like eggs, so that will work. So here we go. Okay, so today is day one, which means tomorrow's day zero, which means tomorrow's the surgery. And um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm a little bit of everything in one ball. Uh, I found out today from the pre-op nurse I have to be there at 5.15 a.m. Oh, that's, that's going to be killer. Uh, hopefully not. But, uh, but yeah, I know that should be fine. I'm kind of excited enough. I'm sure it'll be easy to get up. Uh, poor, feel kind of bad for Heather that she has to get up that early, but, uh, you know, we're a team. Uh, food wise, I'm sick of, not sick. Actually, I don't mind sugar-free jello, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's not that bad. It doesn't really do anything. Today, I can't drink any protein, so it's only just clear liquids and jello and stuff like that. So, um, feeling kind of hungry today, but you know, I'm excited and I know well, I have a goal, which is tomorrow. So, uh, that's good. Tonight, I've got to do some pre-op stuff. Like I have to shower and I have to put this stuff on my belly and I got to, um, pack up everything for the hospital overnight stay and and yeah i think um that's all easy stuff i think uh, it was kind of good i had a moment to talk to david about what's happening so and he seemed encouraging and of course moira has been my boss has been very encouraging which i'm grateful for and um yeah i when i first thought when i first found out this is going to happen i wasn't sure if i was going to tell anyone like not even my mom but uh, it's kind of hard not to tell people and, and especially in the world that we live in where people expect you to be at your desk every five seconds. So uh, I decided that I might as well just tell the people that matter. Or I'm not telling everyone per se, unless they ask, obviously. And I'm, I'm not pretty open about it. I'm a pretty open person to begin with. But um, but I just am not broadcasting it yet because I just don't know what I want to do. And, and um, that's why I'm recording in here, my vlog, <laughs> my personal journal, video journal. So yeah, that's it. Um, I guess I'm happy it's kind of here. Uh, we'll see how it goes. The nurse, the nurse was kind of like she had a laundry list of things I had to do, and then at the very end, she's like, "You're gonna start losing weight rapidly, so get ready." I'm like, "Yeah, sounds good." And uh, I was telling David about the situation, and of course, it ended up with, "Ah, oh, you know, I look so good in a suit again." So um, he understood. So um, so yeah, that's it. Um, prayers so everything goes well and uh here we go all right so i think i'm gonna wrap up this video here basically this is everything up until the day before the surgery in my next video i'm going to talk about the actual day of surgery and going to the hospital and and dealing with sort of getting there at 5 a.m fortunately everything worked out in the long run but it was definitely a journey of that week prior uh there were some trials and some tribulations but it all worked out in the end Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you're considering any bari bariatric surgery or making a lifestyle change like I did, please leave a comment in the show notes below, and I'd be happy to answer you in comments or let me know if there's something I can make in a new video. I'd be happy to share with you how uh, it changed my life. That's it for this video. Bye for now.